Oh, 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 oh my gosh. <laughs> there he yeah, goes. The, is growing. the cool thing about that version is actually 2011 was one of the versions where they actually got a lot of uh, new features. So a lot of the stuff that I'm doing on my 2013, you'll be able to do. And actually, I should download 2014 just because, I mean, why not? I mean, we get it for free, so. If you can. Oh, I can. <laughs> well, yeah, of course I can. I mean, I get freaking, I get as many things as I can. I just, I just love it. Because then that, then that's like, if you have multiple computers. Oh, okay. So do activate, and it should activate automatically. Oh, and actually, it might ask you to log into your Autodesk account. Again. Possibly. Well, I've already logged on to it. Oh, well, then it might just automatically go. Let's see what happens. Um, also, I'll, should I just press activate? Yeah. Right. And then that'll, that'll basically activate it until like after your graduation time, like at least your entire degree program. Yeah, I'll look back into that. And then what you'll notice is you're, you're going to have that same Autodesk license or that same Autodesk user account. It's going to be across all your products. So no matter what you get, yay, it's activated. Yes. We are official. Yes, okay, That's finish. awesome. So it's going to yeah. load up this like environment thing and then you're going to see like all of the interface. It usually takes a little bit to load up all of the stuff. But here we go. This is a, this is, this is, this is seriously a like, version. seriously an epic day right here. Okay, so, so the drawing file being opened was not created by a product from an Autodesk education suite. Right. I'm going to say continue. It's going to say that every time you open it. That's the only bad thing. It's just so, oh. so if we try to take some of our design elements from this educational uh, software and put it in a commercial one, it's going to give it that student watermark, which means you're not allowed to actually build a physical, real building with it. It's only for development purposes, portfolio, and non-commercial, which is totally fine for us. Um, so you can just close all that. Don't show again. You don't really care about that. I'm going to be your tutor from now on. So, you know, well, I'll be one of them. Yeah. I'm not going to be stingy. And with that yeah. thing, you can you can check that out at some point. But for now, you can just close it. It'll just open up next time you go on the iPad. Okay. It's, it's going to load in your 3D environment. And yeah, I'm, I So I'm literally... <gasps> That's awesome. It is. This is so, a very big moment. <laughs> so I'm gonna like I'm going to let's see. I'm gonna like screen share my thing real quick just so that way I can show the uh, switch real quick. Just to show what we're working on. We're working on the Sky Plaza building and some other ones and this is basically the first time that we now have two AutoCADs. We're gonna be working on X referencing and Building Lego blocks and all this really really cool crazy stuff, and so okay. So what you should do from now is, if you just kind of click anywhere inside of that grid area, in the gray area, okay. Yeah, the, that area, okay. Just so that way your mouse is there. So what you can do is type in, um, type in uh, grid. And then press the space bar. Oh, sorry, my bad. Let me do that again. Okay. That's what it did. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Hit hit the escape key a few times. So I, I press, excuse me, I type grid and then escape? No, just, just press escape because it got confused for a second. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I'll type in grid just from there. And then space? Yeah. Um... I wonder why it's it. I wonder if it's trying to give you like a line or something. Hmm. It says specify opposite corner. It's. Oh, you know what? Let me let me go back to my article. Let me just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to get on the same page with you. Okay. But basically, what we want to do is just do escape one time. Now just automatically start typing grid now without clicking anything. Just start typing grid. 
There we go. Now press space bar. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to press uh, the letters OF for like of. And then enter or, or enter or space. Space and enter do the same thing. So what you just did was you turned off the grid with the command. Wow. So to turn back on the grid, you guess how you do it? You basically type in the same thing, but this time you type in on. On. And the only reason why you didn't have to type OFF is because OF is close enough to the answer that you needed. And there you go. Oh, You're already a guru. Look at you. So what I do <laughs> is I usually turn off the grid because... I don't use it to actually design. I just center everything to zero zero, um, so you can keep it off for now. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be Jerry. Okay. And then what you want to do is type in um, U N and then enter or a space bar, whichever one you prefer. Now this is units. This is gonna set up your drawing. So if you want to work on the design and you really don't care about what size it is, just stay with the default. This right here, because once you figure out what the design is and what all the angles, you can always make it whatever size you want using a one-to-one -one scale. Just like, oh, if this is 10 units and that's 20 units, then if this is 10 feet, then that's going to be 20 feet. So that's fine. So if you click, select the drop-down area under type, at the very top it says length, um, you'll see architectural. And that's what will probably be in that a lot. I'm in that a lot. And then where it says precision for that left side, yeah. you want to do uh, 1 32nd of an inch. Because that is generally in building for architecture and interiors the most precise that we're going to need to be for that. For like engineering, it's like 60 fourths or higher. So we're good with that. And on the right hand side is for like if you're going to be doing angles, how much precision do you want with angles? And I'm not really going to like train you right now on this. I'm just, I just really wanted to show you like how easy it is to do commands. So you can just like close out of that whenever. Okay. So from there, if everything is cleared out in your command line, then just go ahead and type in C and enter or a space bar. C and then. So then type in zero comma zero right now. Just zero comma zero. And enter. Now you're going to be creating a circle from the zero, zero, zero location of this drawing. And you can just type in a, type in D and enter or a space bar. That's going to say, okay, well, how, how much diameter do you want? So let's just give it any kind of number, and then you can put the feet mark using the, you know, the quotation thing. That's the foot symbol. So you can do something, and then the foot symbol. Oh, wait, I think you already created it. Oh, okay. So now what you want to do is just hit escape one time. So to see everything that's in your drawing currently, type in Z for zoom. And then do A for all. Zoom everything. It's going to automatically fit it to your frame. Boom. Oh. You are awesome. You are killing it right now. <laughs> so if you wanted to draw a line, just type in L. And then specify the first point. You can choose any point along that circle you want to, to draw. Um, and then you just literally click and drag however much you want that line to be. And that's literally it. Wow. And when you're done, you just hit escape or enter. Amazing. I feel like you're working right now. I feel like you're trying. I feel like you're going to do something And <laughs> hey, now right you now. can leave me alone. I'm alone. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> exactly. Yo, that was really easy. Right? I'm telling you, it's like I said, I can't even count on my hands, like, you know, the, well, like, you know, the commands that I use on a regular basis. I literally use these all the time. And so what you can do also is do region real quick. Just type in region. Oh, actually, cancel everything first. Just hit escape. 
No, R-E-G-I-O-N for region. Okay, I did region and then enter. Did it say, is it asking you to select something? Oh, okay, so I, yeah, select select. objects. See where the mouse cursor is? Select yeah. that circle. Just click anywhere on that circle. Oh, uh, actually on the line of the circle. Oh, I, oh my gosh. Right at the same time you did, I did it. Okay. And then just hit enter or whatever. Okay, so now that you did that, you're going to type in visual styles. Visual, just visual styles? Yep, all one word. Uh, no space with it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, I did that. Yeah. I pressed enter. Do you see a little, a little, um, a little sub menu that pops up that says Visual Style Manager? Yep, there you oh, go. Okay, now it is. Okay, so you can click, click on any one of those ones that's more solid, like the one next to it. The second one in is like more concept wise. Now watch what happens when you do that. Double click on that. So that's oh, going to change the visual oh. style of your of your environment there. That's fine for now. So just go back over to where your circle is now, and then over there on the top um, the top right hand corner where it says top and all that. Yeah. You can literally like put your mouse over there, and then um, click and drag, and you can see that you're going to start to go in 3D now. Yep, just click and drag anywhere on that, and you're going to start to make it 3D. Like drag it up and down or something. And Yeah, I'm trying. Do you oh, have wow. a, do you have yeah. a, um, do you have, are you using your laptop mouse, or do you have a USB mouse? I have a USB mouse. Awesome, does it have a middle mouse button? No, excuse me, sorry, a laptop, my laptop mouse. Oh, okay. Do you happen to have a USB mouse at all? I do not, not for my laptop. I should send you one for an AutoCAD what? gift. Oh, okay. awesome. But anyway, once you get a mouse with the middle button, it'll be a lot easier to do things in 3D because you press the middle mouse button and shift, and it automatically rotates everything around. Oh, okay. So if your laptop happens to have a middle mouse button on your laptop, you can do the same thing if there's a 3D. It doesn't, it just has the left and right button. Okay. So for now, use that little square thing. But now what you want to do is click on that circle. And now that it's a region, you can click anywhere on that circle that you created. And then you can do extrude, E-X-T-R-U-D-E -E for extrude. Now you can actually go back over to that thing and rotate it in 3D so that way you can kind of see like how much depth you're going to give it. Oh my gosh. Wow. But you're upside down now, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to. Oh, there you go. There we go. Okay, so now if you come back over to the circle and you see, notice as you move your mouse up and down, that's going to choose whether you're going in a positive direction or a negative direction. So if you want to go positive direction, just leave your mouse above that line. Right, leave it there, and then just type in a foot value of anything you want. Same way you did the dimension for the other one. You can just like two feet. Boom. <laughs> wow. So now you want to zoom in on that whole thing. Now, how are you going to zoom in on that? Um, Z enter. Z enter, and then A for all. Wow. But now what you can do is do Z and then enter, and then enter again. Now you can just click and drag and zoom in and out. Oh, okay. And so with just that right there, and if you get a mouse with the middle mouse button, you're gonna you're already like doing guru stuff. Do you realize that like people that do AutoCAD, they always start with the menus and all. I'm not having you do that. I'm having you dive right into being a guru. So congratulations, you did phenomenally well. Thank you very much. You created circles. You've created some 3D, you've got around in it, you know how to zoom.
you've created a line, and that's really all we need to talk about right now. Like that's awesome. I'm really happy. I'm like so happy right now. So this is really amazing. So I'm gonna send you actually a copy of the Sky Plaza model building. That way you can actually open it up and actually go crazy, like looking at you know rotating around and stuff like that. And then you can take your screenshot off because then now that we recorded this little video, you gotta kind of like say hi and stuff to people that may if we happen to put this on YouTube or something. Because, um, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, that's Hello, everyone. They didn't think it, uh, they, didn't, they didn't know what was behind that camera. <laughs> there was someone behind it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so now, you, 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 you an can, amazing lecture from the great Phil. You, you can officially go to bed anytime after now, so. Yeah, after doing that, I mean, I'm so worn out. Really? You need a shave. <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta start conditioning. You gotta get ready. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, that was that was cool, and I'm gonna post the uh, our in progress to Google Plus probably first. I'm gonna tag all the architects in it so they can be like, ooh, <laughs> you know, then I can then I can be like, you know, by. Phil Bailey, Norma, blah blah blah, and then people are gonna be then people will know, you know, like we're working on stuff and cool, cool, cool. No, thank you for your help. That was really awesome, like you know, just to to teach me that and to take the time for it. Thank you. Well it helps me out too. You know, it's the same thing as we learn in school, like once we learn how to do perspective and we have to critique others, it helps us to be better in perspective. Yeah. Because then we know when it's wrong. So, it's not a problem at all. When um, do you have any idea the next time that you might be able to have like a fifteen minute? Or... Um, I know it sucks because usually when we hang out, it's never less than like an hour or two. So I know, like, yeah, we have we consume a lot of time because of things like it's been a while and we have a lot that we need to go over. Yeah, but I know we that Saturday, oh. Saturday, but. Ooh, I like, think I have a wedding on Saturday to do. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Well, I actually, think... possibly Saturday night though. Well, I yeah, yeah, I can't. Because you work on Sunday. Because the next day I work. Yeah, it's definitely one of those nights where I, I don't want to push my time. Hmm. Um, I want to say maybe even tomorrow, but earlier in the day, maybe like two, three in the afternoon. I'm literally here all day except for if I go out somewhere. I might go get my hair cut and stuff like that but i'll pretty much yeah. be here so okay yeah i don't have a lot of time like but like i said right now since we're on break i kind of seem to have more, you know more time and i definitely want to the time that i have want to invest in and that and the same with me it's my day off and so if i if i do oh, I just yeah. uh, have anything going on it's you know just to go run a couple of errands okay and do my chores of course yeah <laughs> awesome so are you gonna you're gonna leave me now Pretty much, yeah, it's my time. Awesome. I don't want to sound more and more drag to you. <laughs> that, wasn't the right, that wasn't the right answer, but I'll give you that one, though. You, you know, it's fine. I understand. You're not, everybody's not a night owl like me. It's only it's only 1 o'clock for me, so this is like yeah, early. When this... I am a night owl, actually, but um, I just, you know, don't want to be up too late because then it's tomorrow. I want to have enough energy for tomorrow's week. That's what I want to hear, exactly. Yeah. All right, so well. Like 2 o'clock, 3 sounds good, but I'll let you know for sure. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll hit you up around that time anyway just to make sure, like, if you have anything going on. You know what I mean? So that we're, we, uh, like I say, we connect at the same realm. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Air high five. Yeah. Air. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> No, I'll Thank talk you to you. Know. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I know it's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be even more awesome once we get James regularly like rendering waterfalls and like fire and stuff like that. That's gonna be like yeah. That's gonna be yeah. crazy. And there'll be chairs and and exactly you know all sorts of accessories, lamps yeah. along with waterfalls. And see, we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna be designing the furniture that goes inside of these models too. Because he was asking me, he's like. You know, we can download some furniture. I'm like, well, dude, like, we, you know, we design furniture too. He's like, oh, yeah, you do. And he can make it look like leather or whatever. 
Like usually yeah. when they when they do three D model prints, they make it look really good. Yeah. So I feel bad for letting you for like ending our meetup. No, it's fine. We we did more than, <laughs> we did more than enough. We did more than enough today. We accomplished a lot. Yeah, I mean, I installed the program. The next one on, on you got the programs list. installed. We got like the, we got a good conceptual model. We got some ideas. We added some new parts of the building. We got yeah, your we signature. Got window. We got windows. Right, we got windows. We got your signature. We got um, you. Your first commands. Your first command was grid. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. You know. It is. Um, just one quick question about your uh, that module that you told me about the square rectangular looking module. What kind of space were you looking at? Like like an apartment or like like a living space, or were you thinking more of a public kind of space? The one that's on the granite wall. Not um, no, is it? It's that that it was a blue. Oh, the blue the blue one. The blue module, yeah. Well, the blue one is um. Did you mean the like the blue square? Yeah. Um. Wait. Well, that I told you about the windows to have one in the front. Okay. And one yeah. On the side. It's, it's yeah. whatever. It's whatever we come up with. Okay. Because we're a unit now, so I mean, we we just kind of brainstorm as many possibilities and then figure out. Because maybe there might be a situation where, it would be better to have, a restaurant maybe in the upper levels of the middle of the waterfall feature than it is to have it in that smaller part maybe the smaller part is like you said it could be a museum with like really nice views but then if it's a museum how many views of the waterfall do you really want to like not you don't want to compete with the art you know you want it to complement it so yeah you know well, definitely i'm thinking it's in compliments yeah so i mean it so, can be anything i like the idea of it being like a restaurant like maybe it could be part of a restaurant or if we, I mean, because I don't know if we're going to build any more modules off of that granite wall. I like the idea of making part of that wall granite and then like making the back part of that wall like an elevator shaft because then you got this exposed elevator shaft on the back side of the building, which is pretty badass. And then the, the granite is actually going to be Google's asking uh -oh. if I'm sleeping. No, I'm not. I've been on Google. Well, not right now, right now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, Sorry, I was because I was just um, thinking in uh, what kind of brainstorming should I do? You know, what kind of accessories like, like living room space or like an apartment or you know. It could like, be. Uh, I mean, it could be condos. It could definitely be condos because twenty-five by twenty-five is not too small. I think it, it, it's basically like this. This whole. Is that, this whole it, it's the, the square-looking one, or you're not talking about the the round one. No, the square one. No, the square one. Okay. So you said, and it's twenty five by twenty five. Yep. Okay. And so, if we add a if we add a module that hangs off the side of the building, then we're going to expand the interior square footage of that. And that's why it's cool because even though it's a smaller footprint, you know, if it is a condo, we can use two of those floors of twenty five by twenty five, and now you've got, you know, twice the square footage. And if we use any exterior modules, then we've got, you know those additions to that square footage too. So I can totally see if that's gonna be built in a community type area, it you know, you could definitely have condos on one of those columns. Maybe one of those columns is like more of a condo thing where in order to get to that bridge that takes you to that, you have to have the key card kind of thing or whatever. And if yeah. you if you're part of the community, you can take the elevator up to the restaurant that's there or the theater or the sky bridge which will take you to like another another building. Maybe another building is more commercial, so it's like businesses, like a Starbucks or a, those kind of businesses, things that like the city could um, rent out and and have their, uh, you know, have the have it pay for the building itself, basically. That's I do like the idea of it, like in a sense of a restaurant, uh, because it's on the same floor where you have that patio area, right? Possibly, but then if we use the golden ratio thing and we take the golden section of that length of the building, let's say it's from here to here, maybe the golden section is about like this much. So we can put the restaurant there where the thumb is, or we can flip it and put the restaurant down here where the, where the pointer is. 
So instead of instead of having a downward view of this waterfall from that restaurant or whatever that space is, we can have a lower view looking up at the waterfall, which can also be cool too. Oh, that would be amazing. So oh, and there's another idea, which the opposite side of this tower, there's another, obviously they're all square columns, but like the opposite side, right? So if this one uh -huh. if this one is looking downward, then maybe the opposite column could be the one that's lower, the 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 inverse golden ratio, right? So the yeah. inverse golden section. So the bottom part can have that upward view. And that could be kind of like you would know what section of the building you're in based on like maybe the view that you got from the waterfall or it's like you know that this particular deck is, you know, a north facing deck or that the granite wall is a north facing granite wall or something like that. It, those kind of things would be cool to keep in mind. And like I know yeah, that I know we don't know exactly where the building is going to be built at necessarily, but but you can you can estimate you can guesstimate, but like okay, well let's imagine that maybe the sun's going to come from one direction, where all of the windows are going to be facing that direction, so we can get as much light we can in there. But right now that's not really our biggest issue because sorry, <laughs> oh that's fine. <laughs> don't let it happen again. No. Yeah, you know right. <laughs> but like, but anytime. Like any time through our, our concept phase, there's gonna be like, what I usually do but on my own is I'll brainstorm many, many things. And the way that I design everything, whether it's a website or a business card or anything, a building, interior, I'm thinking about not the overall bigger picture, I'm thinking about the smaller components of what I want that space to contain. And then I rearrange those based on the need and say, well, what if I put the bathroom on this side versus that side, how close is it to you know, the front door, and is that good for feng shui, or is it good for this or that, you know what I mean, so yeah. we can just play with, we just basically got to write it down as different ideas, and I don't think we're going to forget these ideas, I mean, I, th I think we're pretty fired up about it that now that we've seen it the way it is in this kind of form, even, I mean, it's crazy, like, even just the 2D looks so cool to me, like, you know, the granite wall, the waterfall, the people there, yeah. Like mm -hmm. the one person's like inside of the little the little cubicle thing, and the other person's like on the rooftop of that building, and then like the other people down below, like looking at the waterfall, because maybe they're just like walking through, and then like the people up on that deck, maybe they're like they're going. I to still the have a picture on my browser because I love looking at it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't closed it. It looks really awesome. The waterfall yeah. complements the granite really well. It really does. Yeah. And, I and then if you, bright, if you have bright color too with the granite, that's amazing right there too. You know what I mean? Because mean it like, adds like, that kind like of materials, the, like, the like, Sorry, like what's that? you mean like the bright, like bright materials or something? Well, um, bright yeah material on the outside of the building, even on the inside of the building too. I can see yeah. because it's like it's a strong structure, and that's I think the granite part of it. That's what it represents, like strong strain. You know, um, immensity, um, um, fancy, fancy. You know, being it being fancy, but then yeah. the bright colors bring that, like the the fun and inviting, exactly. and you know, listening and yeah, exactly. yeah, it's it, yeah. It's like you know what I mean. Yeah, the whole vision. The, my whole vision since middle school was to make it a like it's literally like the spot of the community. Like people want to go there. There's a theater there. They want to you know grab a bite to eat there. They want to just maybe enjoy like the bio hydroelectricness, you know. That's totally. It's not necessarily an invention per se, but it is an innovation of really integrating as much green as we can to like that green is gonna not only like filter out water. It could be water from a river. It could be water from anything. But also, it's it's also gonna be like people that plant things like you know um, like organic places like maybe there could be a farmer's market up on that upper wing there and um, we could be growing things and that water that's being re recirculated or whatever it could be recycled rainwater that once it rains the water kind of stays in like a, t a tank up there and then it gets like filtered down through the tank with like this kind of like osmosis kind of thing through the soil and then so the plants get fed this recycled rainwater that's already pure and even there's yeah. like you know, like just things like that. Like it's gonna. I want it to be a really, really green building, and I think the more yeah, there's a lot of green. From what you're saying, there's a lot of green <laughs> aspects to it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that, that's that's awesome because it sounds like you're you're being able to input as much green of this uh, 
of that idea to this building as possible, or even to the other buildings as well. Yeah. The whole complex. So that's yeah. awesome. And remember those pipes I was talking about, the recycled pipes? Yeah. The K9s or whatever. So it's like I want to do as many designs where, like, my goal when I was younger was I wanted a semi truck or a few semi trucks with my company. So that way I can drive around the country and actually pick up material that was deconstructed from like historic buildings because the company Modern Masterpiece, the original name was Modern Modern and Classical Masterpieces by Phil Bailey. And so um, it was modern and classical and everything in between. So now in this modern life that we're in now, I shortened the name because of, as a marketing thing, instead of saying modern and classical blah, 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 it's too much. Yeah. So just, yeah. just two words, just modern masterpiece. And people that know the company are going to know that that means modern and classical masterpieces by. And it's not going to just be Phil Bailey because, hello. So it's just modern masterpiece. And that's modern and classical masterpieces. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah. and that's like everything. But it's, um, yeah, it's just really, really cool. So I, I just want, I wanted people to like know, like I want to, I want to like, Build modern buildings, but I want to have this like classical. Aspects, and, you know, and the, the granite is it's classical. Definitely, it is. Yeah, and what would make it even more green and more lead and all that kind of green certification that they have nowadays is that granite would have to be sourced within five hundred meter, five hundred miles. Like you draw a circle from that granite wall, and there has to be some kind of granite rock or some kind of something like whatever the earth is in that 500 mile radius we can use yeah. any granite and that's going to be considered kind of like locally sourcing the material so we're not importing it from china we're not importing it from you know across the country it's like literally you know kind of like next door neighbor kind of thing yeah so i i try to consider all those things too and i just like the idea of having part of that wall be granite and then like the back side of it is just this complete modern curtain wall wrapping around you see like this that's like the that's like one of the most like modern the curtain wall. unveiling the masterpiece exactly and all the guts too i'm really big about exposing the guts like the gears and pulleys and um you know all that kind of stuff and yeah real quickly okay. remember the remember the model that i showed you online the uh, the video the original one where all the little different colors there were like lights at yeah. nighttime so just imagine all the different parts on this building now that we have like all those different awnings over the top. Um, I can just throw my screenshot on just for just a second. Yeah, go for it. Um, literally like all of these um, awnings and all the red surfaces, originally that was gonna be just fabric, PVC, because it's gonna be a lot cheaper I think than metal, but to make some of those metal would be awesome to do like some Frank Gary type of like really really curvy organic shapes. See, I don't want to bite Gary style. I don't want to be like, oh, he's gonna be like Frank Gary. I'm like, no. I'm like literally modern classic. I love it. I'm I'm a water sign. I'm a Cancer. I'm a Yin Yang. You know what I mean? Like, I love yeah. those. I love those opposites, and I love the harmony that they have. So that granite and glass. Glass is more modern in terms of design, but yeah. glass is but also that is beautiful though. I just I'm like cannot get over the fact that it's like glass, water, and then the granite. Just really good compliment. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, the, the that that upper three floors is going to be mostly probably curtain glass too, and then that part that's yellow is going to be uh, it could be a combination of material and all the floor. Wait, the, the blue part of it might be glass. Um, the the, the top three levels, in the center, like right here. Well, can you see my mouse? Uh, sorry, what's that? Can you see my mouse? No, okay. I, don't, I can't see what's that. Okay, we well, see like right in the center of the picture though. Do you like it? Oh my god, yeah. Doesn't that look so official? It does. Wow. Yeah. That's such a personal touch. I know. That touches me personally. <laughs> I'm glad. So okay, so yeah, so um basically like um, let's see. You're talking about the middle section being glass? Yeah, like the top three levels. There's like there's like a dark blue, a light blue, cyan, and a yellow. Yeah. Okay, so basically like those three colors represent 
the different levels of the um, the building. Uh, I'm sorry, the, they represent the, the top three levels of the structure. So I was thinking they could be glass, combination of glass, and more traditional constructions. But we wanted to keep everything open because you got this like amazing view. So um, that would yeah, that would be a really good idea to have the center. Have All right, right, have a good night. All right. Uh, yeah, it would really give a, a good insight into the waterfall and right. all the, the structural elements around it. Yeah, and actually one of the cool things is there's actually a gap in between the lower level of the that yellow in the middle. There's actually a gap of one story because that, uh, that platform that you're on, you're going to be able to actually look where the water kind of you know, where the source of the the waterfall itself, that kind of, that was what I was thinking. Yeah, that's like, a good idea. Like, you would literally be able to, like, you're on that deck, and you would literally be able to look over the balcony and see the waterfall. But obviously it's going to be, that the, the balcony there will probably like a full, a full curtain of glass, so you can't actually, you know, people can't actually jump in there. But maybe you might do, like, a cage that's big enough to where people can actually get inside of it, kids can't get inside of it, but it's enough that it doesn't take away from the view of, hey, look, cool, there's where the water, you know, falls from the top. Now I'm on top of the waterfall, like, I started yeah. below. I'm on top of the waterfall, yeah, that's a good yeah. one. That's what it's, it's, it's feel like. Yeah, and, you know, we have a place in, in Portland called Multnomah Falls, and um, it's it, this reminds me a lot of that. You have, like, granite, you got concrete, and then you got these little trails. So literally all these different little decks and stuff could be kind of like hiking up this Multnomah Falls thing, you know? It's like the yeah. Monoma, it's like the Monoma Falls of Sky Plaza kind of thing, and uh, yeah. so you get to the top. It's like yay, the top of the waterfall. But then, just like at Monoma Falls, you can continue beyond the waterfall. There's a place called Larch Mountain. So the very top, where it's like dark blue and like the red awnings, um, that would be like the Larch Mountain of the Sky Plaza. So like we're like way above where the waterfall actually originates from. And it, it just makes a lot of sense to keep that kind of open and like you want to have these views so that way you're like, oh, wow, you know, every view of this place should be phenomenal. Like, I just, I don't know. I'm just so excited to see some of the, the cameras that we put inside of this building and like render it out. And it looks very complicated, but like I said before, we're only going to be rendering out the pieces that we need to make our scene realistic. So like, um, I can't zoom in there. But anyways, um, I mean, we can talk about, I mean, we're obviously we're going to have a lot of time to talk about it, but it's, it's so, I don't know, it's really relaxing to me. I don't know about you, but just like staring at, I just stare at it all the time. And I do that with, I do that with everything. I just stare at them. It's like, damn, That's like good. the signature. Well, I'm telling you, like, right now, now that I, that I see this render of it, it's really amazing. And it just draws your eyes to it so you know, and this is not even the finished product of it. So I can only imagine once it's finished, how much attention it would get. You know, yeah. and uh, how much people would definitely want to go on all fours of it. Exactly, and that's just the one of four buildings of the whole Sky Plaza too. Like and that's the plan. that's the other cool thing. You know. Yeah. Like, just imagine like a park above that. Like I don't know, like a bridge, but part of the bridge is like you know a park. And people are up there, and they're like playing soccer up there. They're throwing footballs around. It's like more than enough space. And um, there's not going to be like a direct drop since it's like so high up. It wouldn't be a direct drop. I mean, if you were to fall over the side of the park part thing, maybe you would fall onto a platform that was maybe like one level below. So you're not going to like die, but I mean, like, you might break an arm or two, but it's not like falling <laughs> off 10 stories. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and you know how. Yeah, I, I, what's that? I was gonna say, you know how bad we, me and you are. I mean, we've already been going for forty-two minutes now. Of this, this. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna let you get some sleep, but. Um, um, okay. Yeah, I need to get some energy for for more discussions about this tomorrow. But yeah, you know, definitely, I can see how it's, you know, it's in good hands. It's in your hands. It's in our hands. It's in your yeah, hands now. Our hands. Sorry. <laughs> we are we are official now. We are we're definitely official. Like we're doing this. And then James is 
I know he's he's been down. Like he's always trying to find you know really cool projects. So shout out to James, the most amazing VFX guy, good friend. So uh, shout out to Abdul, Leilani. Um, who else? Um, Gia. Um, uh, my best friend Brandon. I guess if he happens to be watching this, he's. He's one of the ones that inspires me to do a lot of cool things. It's like, oh man, you gotta do, you gotta, you gotta go all out. You gotta, yeah. It's like go big or go home kind of thing. So, yeah. Alrighty, I'll go to bed. I'm gonna continue to share this around, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna seriously try hard to not look at it until like tomorrow because usually, like, we're in the moment now. Like, we're in the moment now. I, I guarantee you, yeah. try to just not come back to it for at least a couple hours. And then see if you still have the same result. Like, dude, look at our—that's our skeleton right there. Like, I see the skeleton. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're adding body to it. It's a nice body. <laughs> yeah. Definitely a nice yeah. body. Yeah, we're gonna see it in a in a refreshed way to add what's you know gonna be added to it. That's how we're gonna do it. Lego block by Lego block, little tiny pieces. Now you got AutoCAD going. I mean, this is watch out world. Hello. <laughs> I'm running with it, okay? So gotcha. I gotta go I gotta go take it to my dreams though. Right. Yeah, yeah and whatever whatever ideas you come up with, just write them down, just jot them down and we'll literally just um you can actually open up that master document that we have in the de-emphasize on the Google the Google Drive thing and just write them on there so that way we'll just You know, and just with, with that, um with the the granite that you added to the the sky uh, plaza building. Mm -hmm. I definitely like that plot, the, the, excuse me, the granite to your um, bathroom fixture, the columns that you were talking about. Do you remember the columns that yeah. you uh, mentioned? Yeah. I think granite would work really well there too. Instead of like, um, oh, instead of like, it was just like white, there was just like white columns or they were like not really textured? Were, what, yeah, it just didn't seem like there was uh, a set material. Yeah. But I had thought in my mind of like, um, you know, going back and forth with like if we break or some form of concrete. But now that I look at this granite, I really like the granite. That I would do to those. It, it's it's really badass. Like you can yeah you can just I can already see it like seeing it with like your your green vines and whatnot and then adding granite to it um, and then water again. It would be a really nice element. Power to the water signs. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I would definitely like to see a render of those columns in granite. You got it. Okay. That's awesome. That's your homework. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds good to me. So, okay. all right. Have a good night, and then I'll talk to you like tomorrow. Yeah. I'll talk to you later on. I'll I'll hit you up. Okay. Okay. Peace. All right. Bye. Bye.